Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for attending our Match Your High Tech PCB Design to Your Suppliers Capabilities webinar. Uh, my name is Ed McMahon, and I'm the CEO here at Epic. Uh, before we get started, just want to let you know a few things, uh, and that you'll all be, the first thing is that you'll all be muted during the presentation. If you have any questions as we move along, go ahead and enter them into the questions panel located in the webinar control panel, and we will try to get to all of them at the end of the presentation. If we don't have time to go through all your questions, we will make sure we'll apply, we will apply back to you via email. Also, we'll be recording this webinar and we'll be posting both the recording and the slides on our website and YouTube channel for you to access or to share at a later time. Um, our presenter today is Al Wright, and Al's our PCB field applications engineer. Uh, Al's been in this industry for over 35 years and been with Epic for more than 17. Um, as a PCB engineer, he handles a wide range of responsibilities here at Epic for reviewing designs for manufacturability during the quote design stage. He interacts with our manufacturing to solve technical challenges during production. And he's worked on well over 100,000 different designs from his start way back in 1981. Uh, lately, Al has been really focused on working with customers and, and creating some high reliability, high tech PCBs with all of the new technologies out there, uh, as, long as, being, as well as being our product lead for our extreme copper PCB business, where we have developed some pretty unique technologies where we can put up to 20 ounces of copper selectively on other layers of print circuit boards for some high reliability aerospace applications. Uh, so without any further ado, I'll pass it over to Al. Okay, thank you, Ed. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. We'll be going over uh, matching your high-tech design to your supplier's capabilities. And the agenda will be, first off, to understand best design practices. We'll just touch on that briefly. And then uh, parts about learning supplier production capabilities, optimizing designs for manufacturing, some of the manufacturing choke points, physical limitations of plant and equipment, uh, materials such as what's in stock, what's readily available. And then uh, the last part will be beyond the rules when it's time to talk and communicating early for success. First off, understanding best design practices. Basic board may not be difficult to design, but a highly complex one requires considerable skill. Familiarity with best practices is critical for success. And still, even a highly experienced designer might encounter an unfamiliar situation from time to time. And I do see that frequently. People who've been in the business a long time need to know about new techniques. They'll pick up the phone. Some of the resources you can rely on are in addition to industry guidelines and component manufacturer recommendations, design software developers usually host engineer to engineer discussion boards. And these can be excellent real-world resources for solving complex design issues as they arise. Nothing like talking to somebody who's already been there. Now uh, you want to learn your potential supplier's production capabilities. First, choosing an appropriate fabricator. When you finish your highly complex PCB design, it's time to build. If your design is considerably more complicated than usual, then your current supplier may not be up to the task. In that case, you'll need to do some research in order to find a suitable supplier. The basic supplier capabilities are the first thing you want to study. A good first step is to learn the general capabilities of several potential sources. This will help you to understand whether or not they can handle highly complex work. Manufacturers typically state their capabilities on their company website. And on the right, I have a little screenshot of um, Epic's page and some of the tabs you can hit. And uh, circuit board technologies and circuit board capabilities would be the ones that are relevant here. So standard versus advanced design rules. If you notice, there are two columns of rules in the specifications table down near the bottom. One is for standard production and the other is for advanced. Standard basically just means work that can run with minimal supervision and basic processing, while advanced work needs extra oversight and more complex processing. And I've always thought of them as third shift jobs for standard and first shift jobs for the uh, higher complexity ones, meaning some manager may have to go from department to 
department making sure that the more complex work is being done correctly. Um, advanced capabilities. Beyond the basic design rules, there should also be mention of more advanced processing options that are on offer. Look for features such as laser drilling, high layer counts, fine trace and space rules, et cetera. These indicate a high tech supplier. And at the right, that is not actually our page, that's somebody else's page, but uh, you can see they have uh, 64 layers max, very large board size that they say they're capable of, uh, various things that indicate that they have fairly high capabilities, aspect ratio of 18 to one, HDI production capability, et cetera. So this might be a supplier you check out. Advanced manufacturing processes. This is just a list of some of the things you might want to look for, some of the things you might need. You might need via and pad processing. You might need high density interconnect, meaning blind and buried vias with multiple lamination cycles. You might have non-standard base materials, or you need a hybrid multi-layer where you're mixing, say, Rogers and FR4. You might need back drilling for via stubs, castellated edge plated holes, impedance control, laser drilling, cavity formation, or even embedded components. And this board at the right doesn't look especially high tech or dense, but that board is actually only 0.55 diameter, and that means it's about 80% the size of a U.S. dime. So there's a lot of features packed in there, blind vias, five cycles of blind vias, three times sequential lamination. It's uh, actually a surprisingly tricky little board. So now what you want to do is you want to think about optimizing your designs for manufacturing. First, you contact a supplier. Once you've identified a potentially good match, make contact. Discuss your high-tech design and emphasize features that may be particularly challenging. Draw attention to those. Send a file set if you have one. And if all goes well with that conversation, you can consider placing an order. Now, I'm gonna to touch on standard capabilities first. You might wanna set up your uh, CAD program so that the rules match the capabilities. So having spoken to the supplier, it makes sense to create designs that match their capabilities. Set your PCB CAD rules to match the fabricator's standard design rules first. This will ensure that if you have a low complexity quick turn prototype or something similar to that, it'll arrive on time and there shouldn't be too much friction. There shouldn't be a, a lot of holdups as long as you follow those standard rules. Now for your higher tech settings, you wanna set another set of rules for advanced boards. High tech designs will require that you also create a set of advanced design rules. When you design to the advanced rules, you can expect your higher tech board to process smoothly. Be aware that high tech processing may still require more time than standard processing. So over on the right, we're working from this advanced column and using the tighter rules. Uh, now you want to understand some of the choke points that you might be creating with your uh, higher tech work. There are physical limitations to both plant and equipment. First off, ask for details while you're talking to your supplier. Even a highly, even a highly capable supplier may need extra time to complete all the high-end processes that you need. So ask them to explain which processes create delays. Find out whether they might be able to offer alternative solutions. And here we just have a picture of a sequential lamination, uh, three times sequential lamination of a board with four ounce internal copper. That probably is gonna take a little extra work. Uh, potential bottlenecks. Some higher end processes such as via and pad, sequential lamination, castellated hole processing, and multiple surface finishes can add time because they're process intensive. Added steps just equals added time. Basic steps such as drilling and routing cycles with small tools can also slow an order. Sometimes that's overlooked, but in general, it's the higher tech stuff that causes problems. And, and here what you have is uh, an epoxy filling process where they're filling some vias. Uh, outsource processes. Understand that in some cases, some process steps may be done outside your supplier's facility. 
These are usually limited to processes which have very high investment costs and which may not be used every day. It's common right at this moment to outsource laser processing and some surface finishes, particularly Anapeg, uh, just because Anapeg is not as common uh, across the industry, but those are two that are fairly commonly outsourced. Uh, now you want to talk about throughput. When you're ready to move forward with your high-tech PCB order, you need to discuss delivery. Can the new supplier offer a quick turnaround? If you're using any non-standard laminates or other materials, these may not be in stock and may, be, and may add to delivery time. So find out what's stocked. And we'll do a, a whole little discussion on what's stock, what's in stock and what's readily available. Uh, the standard material inventory. Ask the fabricator what laminate products they keep on hand. Most carry a good selection of common FR4 core thicknesses and prepreg sheets to cover everyday work. Usually a single manufacturer's materials will predominate. So if you're using Isola, you're using Isola. If you're using Nanya, you're using Nanya. They don't usually carry too much in the way of multiple lines. Uh, material inventory that's non-standard. In, in addition to FR4, there will usually be a small selection of other common types such as Rogers 4000 series or polyimids. Certain fabricators though who cater to high frequency PCB segment may carry a wider variety of unusual materials. But again, they're usually in small quantities just for quick turns and special occasions. So material inventories for quick turns, whenever practical, learn what your manufacturer has and match your design to what's known to be kept on hand. That approach will enable production to begin immediately with no delays waiting for materials to arrive. And it'll also keep costs down. You won't be paying for shipment or minimum order quantities or, or any of that. Then uh, we'll talk about going beyond the rules when it's time to talk to your supplier. If you find that you're having trouble completing a higher technology layout, even with advanced rules, seek input from the fabricator. They may have a simpler solution that'll make the order less difficult to manufacture. While it's sometimes okay to push the limits on one or two items, doing so should be a last resort. You should always try to find a way around it. Now again, zoomed way in on this image, it doesn't really look like much, but then you realize those pads are only about six thousandths of an inch, and they're at the end of three thousandths of an inch traces, and they have quite a bit of uh, blind laser microvia drilling in those areas. So that's a very, very tight area. It's a little deceptive because it's zoomed so tight, but it is uh, not an easy little spot to build on that board. Um, remember too, you cannot always have everything all at the same time. And you need to understand that some capabilities are conditional. For example, supplier may be able to produce a 3,000 trace, 3,000 diameter micro vias and fine pitch surface mount component pads, but not necessarily on four ounce copper. So ask early because your fabricator can steer you clear of such conflicts and can save you some time there. So uh, this is just a little screenshot of a design rule check of pad-to-pad uh, -pad spacing. So you want to communicate early for success. You want to talk to your supplier as quickly or, or as early in the design process as you feel you'll need. And one thing you can do and one thing Epic offers is a DFM check. So consider submitting files for design for manufacturability review before ordering. Even if you design to meet the supplier's capabilities, a DFM review may still spot items you've overlooked. DFM can also help to resolve conflicts between your files and your specification. And a case there might be a requirement on a fabrication drawing that calls for some standard specification, maybe you just flew in your notes from, you know, a standard note file, and they don't match the design you've done because your design is, is a higher end design than what you usually do. So human interaction of a DFM check will 
usually spot things like that up front and you can get them resolved before they become a slowdown in your order later. So in summary, not every fabricator has high-end capabilities for complex designs. You need to find one that does, and it's good to develop a working relationship. Designed to their capabilities to reduce time and scrap on high complexity PCBs, and both parties should benefit. And that's it for the main part of the presentation, so I will hand it back to Ed McCann. Thanks, Al. Um, well, Al takes a look at some of the questions that you folks sent in. Just briefly mention some of the other products that uh, that we manufacture here at Epic that are all PCB based. As you can see, everything from you know, custom battery packs to uh, flex and rigid flex PCBs that are really close to our PCB business. Uh, flexible heaters, uh, user interfaces, and several other products as well. Uh, next slide, please, Al. Uh, along with that, we have currently uh, taken some customer feedback and, and revamped our award-winning user interface on our online PCB quote and order portal, which is into PCB quote, which you can see right here. Uh, on this site, you can get instant quotes on custom designs up to 16 layers with quick turn delivery, and you can even get um, uh, flex quotes online as well. You can see some of the things that we do up here. One of the things on this site for us is that we like to make it so that it's it's very custom, so we're not going to try to push it, push the fact the fact the the engineer into what we can make. We we can make a lot of different things, so we want to make sure we give you the the flexibility. Uh, next slide, Al. Uh, and again, some of these are some of these advanced things that Al had spoken about. You can get on his PCB quote. You can order them right from there. Many folks have a have a portal, but they try to make it very simple so that just a lot of real simple boards can be done on it. We try to take the other tack, and we're going to go a little bit more uh, complex, so you can order some things like this on our site. You know, it still goes through all the proper engineering, so you're going to be interacting with our CAM folks here. So even though you're ordering it online, you're still getting that service, you're still getting that level of quality uh, that, that you come to expect from the rest of the stuff that we do. So with that, I'll turn it over to Al, and he'll go through some of the questions that came in. Okay, um, let's see, where do we want to start? Um, okay, I'm, uh, if I'm looking for a quick turn prototype of a very dense design, and if I use materials that are known to be in stock, will a denser design necessarily take longer than a board that follows standard rules? Well, no, not necessarily. If your design is just tighter and finer than normal, but you've basically, you know, follow the advanced design rules and have avoided some features that require extra processing, then if all other factors are, e all other factors are equal, um, lead time should be pretty similar. It, it really depends on factors like, um, does it require multiple laminations? Does it require a via and pad, back drilling? possible outside processing, you know, those those processes will add time, but if a board is just a little bit finer, as long as uh, the supplier has the right copper weights in stock on their core materials, you should be able to get a, a reasonably quick turn on a, a dense board. Um, let's see. I've looked at several websites, and one thing I don't always see is their capabilities around micro BGAs. Isn't that something that should be listed among the rules? Uh, yeah, one might think so. Um, bear in mind, though, that web page information is necessarily not always up to the minute, and the, you know the capabilities tend to tend to move ahead. Um, more quickly than things get posted. That may not be a great thing, but it's just the reality of the situation. Web information just lags a little bit. Um, the, one, the one reason we suggest when you get into a high-end design cycle or, or is that there may be more than one way to kind of skin the cat. You know, if you uh, you have something like a micro BGA. There, there are a couple of different ways you can handle that, depending on, you know, do you want to shrink the pad? Do you want to use a solder mask defined pad? Um, 
you need to run traces between them. You're usually not going to be able to, but it's worth having the conversation. So um, those are some things that might come up in the conversation, and you might also want to consider what the rest of the layer looks like. So there's there's a lot of stuff that can come up where just reading something off a website may not be the best way to deal with something that's fairly difficult to do. Uh, let's see. I'm starting. Oh, here's a pretty good one. Um, I'm starting to get into more complex designs and I'm considering switching to a higher end layout software. Is there a program you recommend that handles things like blind drilling, vias and pads particularly well? All right, well, I will preface this by saying I'm not a PCB designer, so I'm gonna tread lightly here. I don't wanna annoy any software developers, but I will say that over the past several years, we've seen a pretty significant migration toward Cadence Allegro. Uh, they seem to have gotten out ahead of the pack a little bit with support for things like blind vias. And uh, so anecdotally, I would say that most of the higher end work we see uh, that involves stacked vias and HDI is, is probably generated in either Cadence Allegro or um, Altium Designer. I think Altium Designer is probably a little bit less expensive and might have a little bit less of a learning curve from what I've heard. But again, I'm not a designer. I can't really endorse anything, but uh, that is what we see as far as output data from those systems. Uh, let's see. I have... Oh, here's a couple. Hopefully I'll remember that these kind of go together. Um, I have designed boards. I have designed boards in the past following what I thought were my board house's published design rules, but sometimes I have delays anyway. Why would that be? Well, sometimes it comes down to just basic design rule checking versus design for manufacturability review. And I actually wrote a post about this sometime in the past month. I'm not sure it's up yet, but. Um, DRC checks are the automated checks that you can run on any CAD, uh, any CAM software. It'll check for spacing violations, missing pads, missing solder mask openings, you know, mislocated drills, stuff like that. But other items aren't really caught without human interaction, believe it or not. Sometimes as an experienced person looking at a design, will notice something that just doesn't really look right. And, uh, Trying to think of an example. Well, there's one customer we have that has, um, that they'll do eight layer boards with three ounces of copper. And for some reason, they have a tendency to place all of their planes on all the layers in the same location. So what happens, and these are fairly thick boards, what happens is you're losing about four thousandths of thickness on the right side of the board versus the left side for each layer of uh, the board. So they have on occasion complained about the overall thickness being out of tolerance on the side where there's no copper. That's the kind of thing that an experienced operator, once they've seen that happen, they, they may be able to spot it and flag it. That's just one example off the top of my head. Um, and the, the related question to that one is, uh, one board house's site specifically warned not to design a board solely according to the design rules on their web page. Isn't that why the rules are listed there in the first place? Well, that's a legitimate question. And uh, I guess this this kind of gets back to the slide toward the end of the presentation where I said you, you can't necessarily have everything. Um, some design rules are, are interactive. In other words, you can do a four thou trace in a four thou space, but you can't do that on four ounces of copper because by the time you've etched the copper down to the base lamma, your lines will be gone. Uh, so things like that, you can't necessarily just mix and match all the design rules together and expect it to come out good. We had another customer that was very excited that we could do 30 ounces of copper on our boards. Uh, so they designed something like, uh, I think it was a 14 layer board with 30 ounces of copper on each layer. Well, it's, you know, that, that board was like two inches thick, I think, by the end of the day, and the equipment won't handle that. So, you know, rather than be disappointed and rather than put in a lot of extra work, 
it's sometimes just better to uh, you know, give your fabricator a call. Say, I, I see you say you can do this. What do I need to know? What are the details? And uh, hopefully your fabricator can steer you clear of, of uh, false moves and save you some time and energy and then build you some good product. Um, so I think we're just about there. Um, I, I can answer some other questions by email um, after the, the meet, but um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. And if you do have any other questions, send them in and we'll, we'll get them answered for you. Thank you very much.